Hey guys, welcome back. I'm a Dr. Jones, OBGYN and mom to four. Today we're going through some questions that you guys have about periods. I asked on Instagram what you wanted me to answer and within 20 minutes of posting that story, you had asked almost 500 questions. Within 24 hours, I had more than I can even go through. So I sifted through those as best I could, picked out what I kept seeing as recurring themes, and we're gonna go over the top five questions today. By far, the most common question was period poops. What is it? Why does it happen? Is it a real thing? We're gonna talk about it. We will also be going over blots, cramps, treatment options, how heavy is too heavy. If you wanna learn all about the most common questions, you guys asked me, a gynecologist, about periods, stick around. This isn't specific medical advice for any one person. This is just general information, kind of a starting point to talk to your doctor. Bleeding. What's normal? What's not normal? The technical older definition of abnormal is over 80 milliliters of blood loss during a period. Most people aren't measuring that, right? I mean, I certainly am not. And the main reason that I don't really recommend that is because it doesn't matter. If it's causing you problems with your day-to-day -day life, interfering with things that you wanna do, that's too much and we should talk about it because there's lots of options out there to potentially help reduce that amount of blood loss. Other kind of standard accepted definitions of heavy periods are if you're having to change your pad or tampon more than every one to three hours, if you're soaking through pads or tampons to the point that you have to double up on your products. So sometimes people will come into my office, they are always wearing two pads or they're always wearing a tampon and a pad. And that's not normal. The overriding theme here I hope that you're catching is what bothers you is something we should talk about. There's a lot of options for reducing period flow that include birth control pills, but also include lots of other things. I want you guys to use the hashtag on Twitter, fact check MDJ, and we will look at anything that comes up in social media or viral tweets on Twitter to fact check it with science. One of those that I was tagged in was using Motrin to reduce blood flow during heavy periods. And that's actually true. Ibuprofen can do that. Talk to your doctor about the specific dosing and if you're a good candidate for using that method, it's an option. There's also other options, prescription medications that can help with that too. If you feel like your period is too heavy, just talk to us. That's why we're here, that's what we wanna do. Okay, cramps. Lots and lots of questions about cramps. They varied from why they're there to how you fix them or why are they bad, things like this. Why do we have cramps? What causes it? What purpose does it serve? The lining of the uterus produces a substance called prostaglandins. And the purpose of that is to help the uterus contract to allow the lining to separate and come out. And when that happens, you have a muscle, the uterus is a muscle contracting. So it really is just like you think about contractions for labor, but on a decreased scale, the uterus contracts and the lining is allowed to separate and come out. That is painful because when the contraction happens, blood vessels in the uterus have decreased flow and the decreased flow leads to decreased oxygen in the muscle of the uterus and that causes pain. So in general, prostaglandins causing uterine contractions, causing decreased blood flow to the uterus is a cause of cramps. Additionally, you can have cramps from if blood kind of sits in the uterus and creates a small clot, as that comes through the cervix, the cervix opening enough to allow that to come out can be painful and cause cramps as well. So why are cramps worse in some people than others? We probably don't know that 100%, it's most likely related to the level of prostaglandin production. If you are producing more prostaglandins and have more painful periods, that would make sense. Your uterus is contracting more significantly maybe than the other person sitting next to you who says, oh no, my cramps aren't that bad. It's just very individual. There are other things that can cause painful periods that are not normal. And a lot of the questions you guys had revolved around like, if I'm throwing up every day and can't go to school, is that normal? No. If you're having such bad pain that you need opiates or you're missing school or work regularly, that's not normal. It may not mean anything terrible is going on, but it is something that you should see your doctor about and let us check it out and see if we can find anything that would tell us why or at least help treat it. You shouldn't be debilitated by your cycles. All right, next question is blood clots. Why do I have clots that come out when I have a period? Is it normal? Is it concerning? In general, clots 
in and of themselves are not usually indicator of something terrible going on. The way that the vaginal vault is oriented in the pelvis, most of the time what's happening is that blood's just sitting there and coagulating because your platelets work well. This is a good thing. And when you stand up or move around or sit down to go pee, it comes out as a clot. Some people may have a vault that allows that puddling to happen more easily and others may have a vault that is arranged in a way that the blood can easily come out. If you're having really large blood clots or blood clots that are also happening with other really heavy bleeding, that may not be normal and you should talk to your doctor about it. It doesn't always have to just look like normal red blood like you would expect to come out when you get your blood drawn. It can be darker or lighter, have some blood clots, have some tissue, as long as it's not bothersome or new or different or associated with other symptoms. Okay, so we talked about cramps. Now let's talk about things that you can do to help make cramps better. I've linked a bunch of stuff in the description box because I'm a total geek and I like to look things like that up and we like science around here. What can I say? That's why you're here, I hope. So let's split this into two groups. The first one is non-medical options for treating cramps, heat. So we have lots of studies that indicate applying some kind of heat to the lower pelvis can help alleviate cramps. This is usually done with like a hot water bottle or a heating pad. I think in my C-section recovery video, I talked a little bit about a product called Warmies, which is like rice or something inside of a stuffed animal. And I think people use that as well. I like those because they're weighted a little bit. Second option for non-medical treatment that sometimes people have heard, exercise. This is hit or miss. Both the literature and how I get people responding in clinic is mixed. Some people feel like exercise greatly helps their cramps during their period. Some people feel like it doesn't have any effect at all. I've even occasionally had someone say they think it makes them worse. That is an individual thing. Exercise is a good thing to do in general. There's a study on that linked below too. Acupuncture. There's actually pretty good literature that acupuncture is a good complementary or alternative treatment for painful periods. I'll link a study below. If you're interested in that, take a look at it, but that may be an option. Talk to your doctor and see what they think. TENS unit. This is the one that we probably have the most convincing, in my opinion, information on other than maybe the heat one, but a TENS unit used during painful periods reduces pain more than placebo. We have a good study on it. It probably isn't as good as the other options that I'm gonna go through in the next section, which are medication options. But if somebody wants something that's not quite taking a medication, but is not nothing, that may be a good option as well. Let's move on to supplements. There is a lot of data on various supplements, trying to find one that really helps a lot with what we call dysmenorrhea or painful menses, painful periods. The literature is so widely in disagreement on which ones are actually helpful and greatly lacking in good safety information on these topics. I don't feel like I can recommend any of the herbal supplements that they have looked at so far. If you go online, you're gonna see people making big claims about various herbal medications or supplements. Some of that is based in small studies that maybe indicate that, but just aren't very good studies. I think that the public tends to think of natural or herbal or supplement as safer than medications. And in some cases it probably is. There are also really dangerous ways to take those things. I don't feel comfortable based on the amount of science that's out there and the lack of safety data that's out there recommending supplements that may or may not help, may or may not hurt, and don't have safety data. Does that make sense? I'm not against it. I hope that someday we have better information on that. I just don't feel comfortable with supplement recommendations based on what we currently have available. Everything is a risk benefit analysis. Obviously, I just went through some really good literature on alternative therapies that have science backing them. Okay, so moving on to medications. You guys tagged me in another fact check MDJ on Twitter asking about, what was it? Oh, asking about Pamperin, Midol, ibuprofen, things like this. So here's the nitty gritty of that. NSAIDs, non-steroidal anti-inflammatory drugs, ibuprofen and naproxen have really good studies to say that they help with dysmenorrhea or painful periods. The dosing has to be individualized. That's something you need to talk to your doctor about. We have prescription strength doses of those medications that a lot of people feel like they get really good relief from. Ibuprofen has been shown to be far more effective than 
like Tylenol. That brings up the question of Midol and Pamprin type products. Why are they so heavily marketed towards periods? I don't know. Their marketing team have done an excellent job. Those are certainly great options for people who can't take NSAIDs like ibuprofen for some reason. There's a lot of people out there who can't. In my opinion, I would rank those below ibuprofen for how well they treat period cramps. If you're not a research study, you get to use whatever you think is helpful to you as long as you've made sure with your doctor that it's safe. Midol and Pamprin are essentially the same, not identical, but they are made up of acetaminophen, which is Tylenol, caffeine, and an antihistamine. Pamperin difference is it doesn't have caffeine, it has something else that's a diuretic or kind of like a water pill, and that's the function of the caffeine in the Midol also. My main issue with them is that in general, if we look at the literature, ibuprofen or NSAIDs are going to work better. And we have some of those that are prescription and some that are not. How do you know if cramping is too much, normal or not normal? We talked a little bit about that. You know, if it's interfering with your day, you're having to call into work, you're missing school, things like that, not normal. If you're taking over-the-counter medications or doing low-risk interventions like the heat or the TENS unit, and your period cramps are still bothersome to you, not improving or interfering with your life, that's not normal. You need to go to the doctor. If you're having significant nausea, vomiting, you can't get out of bed, really anything that interferes with your ability to live your life like you'd like, go to your doctor. If it feels like your doctor's not listening, the first thing I would do is maybe they aren't interpreting how bad the cramping is. Use the wording, this is interfering with my ability to live my life like I want. That should prompt in their head a need to do something to help with this. And they should give you options, not tell you here's the only thing you can do, like birth control. Can be great for some people, but is not the only option for this. So talk to your doctor if you feel like it's too much or it's not being helped by the medicines that you can buy over the counter. If your doctor seems to make it seem like they don't care or they're not listening, find a new one. So period poop, what is it? Is it a thing? Why is it happening? Period poops or diarrhea during your cycle or right before your cycle starts, this is real. Some people have it worse than others. Some people never notice it ever, but it's definitely a real thing. So why does it happen? Remember earlier when we were talking about the prostaglandins that are made inside the lining of the uterus and allow for contraction of the smooth muscles and shedding of the lining of the uterus. Prostaglandins also act on the gut and that makes you have loose bowel movements or diarrhea sometimes. The same hormone that's causing the uterus to contract and get rid of that lining is also contributing to period poops. I know. So when I was thinking about how to talk about this, I thought, okay, well, does that mean that ibuprofen should help with that? Because the purpose of ibuprofen being helpful is that it decreases the prostaglandins. So I started looking and I can't find any reliable evidence that it helps with period poops. So if any of you know of any literature or anything that talks about period poops being decreased by ibuprofen or other things that decrease prostaglandin synthesis, please send it to me because I think that makes sense in my head, but I can't find any information about it. Thanks for being here today. I want these videos to be informational and helpful, but I don't want them to prevent you from going and seeing someone who can truly help you. If you're not subscribed, hit that subscribe button. If you like this video and if you're still here, that means you did, especially if you learned something that you didn't know, give it a thumbs up. Be kind to yourself, to each other, to me. In the comments, be kind, and I will see you next time.